The fell beasts, as they are most commonly known, are the large, flying, dragon-like creatures that the Nazgul ride after losing their horses. But very little is known about these mysterious beasts. In fact, they are a topic of a bit of debate. In today's video, we will be going through all available information on these creatures to try and figure out what exactly they are and where they came from. Let's get into it. Hey guys and welcome to the Broken Sword. So the fell beasts were described as being large winged creatures without feathers, whose bodies gave off a fell stench. I don't know about you guys, but to me this description sounds very much like a dinosaur, specifically a pterodactyl. Tolkien was once asked about this comparison, and he agreed that there certainly were similarities from his descriptions, but he never actually took inspiration from them. When reading the books myself, I always get a sense that they are essentially a mix of a dinosaur and a dragon in terms of appearance, but with the heavy influence of the imagery from the movie trilogy, it's hard to know how exactly I would be picturing them if I had only ever read the books. Anyway, it is interesting that these creatures are never actually named, essentially just referred to as beasts that are fell. Fell meaning terrible, dreadful, cruel, that sort of thing and Tolkien fans have just adopted, if not quite correctly, the term Fell Beasts as the name for these creatures. So enough of their design and inspiration, let's get into some lore. So the Fell Beasts are first given by Sauron to the Nazgul when they lose their horses at the Fords of Rhenan near Rivendell. As for the first time we see one, that is another topic for debate. After the Fellowship leave Lothlorien and are camped in the western shore of the River Anduin, they see a great winged creature blacker than the pits of night fly over them. Legolas decides to raise his bow and shoot it, causing it to let out a harsh, croaking scream and fall into the gloom of the eastern shore. Now, while it's not confirmed, it seems to me that this could have been a fell beast, especially as, when it was near, Frodo mentions that his wound felt cold, meaning that it surely could have been ridden by a Nazgul at the time. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments. Then the next time we see one for sure is when Frodo, Sam and Gollum are crossing the Dead Marshes. Gollum refers to them as Wraiths on Wings. Then, according to the Chieftain of Harrowdale, a fell beast flies over Edoras and stoops down close to Edoras. They describe it as being a darkness in the shape of a monstrous bird. It was after this event that Gandalf suggests to the Rohirrim that they assemble their forces at Dunharrow instead of in the fields just in case there is an aerial assault. We of course then see them again when Faramir and his men are fleeing Osgiliath and returning to Minas Tirith, until Gandalf then rides out to drive them away. And then the most time we spend with these creatures is when the Witch King of Angmar brings one to the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. This fell beast of course is struck down with relative ease by Eowyn after the Witch King fatally injures King Theoden. Finally, they appear again at the Battle of the Black Gate, but are confronted by the Great Eagles, eventually fleeing at the command of Sauron when he senses the One Ring in Mount Doom. In my opinion, apart from being very large and having the ability to fly, they don't seem to be particularly dangerous. The two main times we actually see someone confront them, being potentially Legolas and Eowyn, they are killed relatively easily, with a single arrow and a single swipe to the neck. I think their main weapon is being extremely terrifying and intimidating, spreading fear to those that they oppose. Having said that, I certainly wouldn't want to come across one in a battle. As for where they came from, again, this is one of those things in Tolkien's universe that unfortunately has been left largely unexplored. All that we know is that Tolkien once described them as remnants of an almost vanished ancient species. Now, this is just a theory, but perhaps they were originally bred in some way by Malkor as a counter and maybe in some way a mockery of Manwë's eagles. We cannot know that for sure, but it seems that Sauron found a way to breed them in the Third Age for his Nazgul servants. I'm also pretty sure that there were more than just nine of them, but again, that's a topic of debate. I understand that answers like this can often be frustrating, but we can only present you with information that is available and our theories and opinions on such subjects. We do not want to start making things up in an attempt to give more complete answers. What we would love to hear is your theories and speculations on the origins of the fell beasts. Even if it's purely fan fiction, we absolutely love reading the comments, so fire away down below. My question for you guys today is this. If you were to fly into battle, 
Would you prefer to fly a majestic and beautiful eagle, or a terrifying yet badass fell beast? Again, I'm only using the name fell beast here because there's no better name for them. Before I go guys, I want to shout out the Tabletop Alliance. If you're into tabletop gaming or 3D printing, then you will hopefully be interested in checking out the Patreon or web store. By signing up to the Patreon, you get access to monthly releases for a discounted price. We have lots of different tiers depending on what you're interested in. We have a fantasy option, a sci-fi option, or an option for both. You can also choose between receiving your monthly deliveries as physical resin miniatures, or if you would rather print them yourselves, you can opt to have them as digital STL files for a lower cost. We are honestly very proud of our custom characters and we think you guys will love them. They fit in perfect to whatever tabletop game you are playing, whether it be proxies for Middle Earth or Warhammer or even a D&D campaign. Or maybe you're just looking for something new to paint. There is a ton of variety and some fantastic packages coming to our Patreon. But if Patreon isn't for you, you can purchase individual models through our web store, thetabletopalliance.co.uk, again available in both physical and digital. Also, if you guys buy anything, paint it and send us a picture, we will send you a 50% off discount code for your next purchase. Thanks guys. Time now has come to thank our patrons. You guys are all the absolute best. We couldn't do all this work without you. Thank you all for your continued support. And if anyone else is interested in checking out the Broken Sword Patreon, the link will be in the description down below. That's it from me today, my friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time on the Broken Sword.